I have piles and piles of scenery and terrain, unpainted, untouched and unloved. If you've been painting yourselves for more than 20 seconds, you are probably in a similar position. But that ends today, when I finish this sweet garbage dumpster from Crisis Protocol. Let's have a look at how I got to this point and how I did this so speedily, easily and funly. Yes, funly. That is a word. Do not look it up, just trust me. I recently visited my local gaming store, Element Games, and saw all of their awesome looking scenery and quite frankly felt jealous. I decided it was time to get some painted up, but I needed to work out how I wanted to tackle it. I already own a boatload of speed paint and oh boy, my fair share of airbrushes. I own two. I own two airbrushes. But neither of these methods are fast enough, easy enough, good enough, or most importantly, fun enough for my liking. Now I'll show you how I painted this up and all the steps which I took. This is applicable to so many different pieces of terrain or scenery and has already become one of my favorite ways of painting large pieces with minimal texture. The first step is to prime it all over in black, making absolute sure to get in all those little nooks and cranberries because they are the most important bits and the actual parts that we want to remain black when we finish the entire paint job. After priming, we need to do a little bit of slap chopping and bring all those exposed bits back up to a brighter, whiter look. It really only needs to be rough and ready, whatever, wherever. This is really just to add a little bit of brightness to those non-recess areas to make adding colour that little bit faster as I'm going to need a lot less layers to pop the colour back out. Accuracy isn't going to be as important as speed for me here, so just slapping it on so I can get back to colourising. Alright, alright, alright. There we go. That is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about rough and ready but you can see I've already brightened that up put loads of white back in there but left the recesses quite black so that's going to give lots of range between the light and shadow there's loads of things we could do now we could just paint it with speed paint all over couldn't we but that doesn't work so great on flat surfaces to everyone's shock and awe I'm going to try something using normal war paint some acrylic paints and for that we're going to use a Sponge. We're going to use a sponge. This is just a makeup sponge. It's got a big side and a little side and a cardboard box. It's a triangle sponge. Start with just loading up the corner of the sponge so we can A, be a little precise in the edges of the scenery, but B, just so we can get used to the feel and how the paint applies. Softly, softly, catchy monkey. We'll go round and round this piece and start seeing the white doing the work for us, making a lighter green compared to the almost black green around the edges. Yay! green shading. We'll do a couple of coats of this and get it up to the shade of green we want. It's just a matter of building up layers until we're happy with it. This is not by any stretch of the imagination a difficult way of painting. Any, absolutely any of you will be able to do this and most importantly you're going to enjoy it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Look at that. A couple of coats later, two or three I think on each bit, just dabbing it round as I was demonstrating and you'll find that sponge and the pre-shading of that slap chopping has just added a lot of effect, hasn't it? You're getting some free highlights on the edges and you're getting some free shading in the recesses and that sponge has added a little bit of texture, just a tiny bit, but it looks quite battered, quite weathered. We're going to do exactly the same on the top of the bins using a dark grey, in this instance Necromancer Cloak, and repeat the process, the same technique, the same tool, just using a different colour. Now the sponge does have a really sharp edge so you can very precisely line it along the lid of the bin and barely if at all get any on the green so you can get a really crisp line between the two separations of colours. So just another little perk using a sponge you can get some very nice sharp edge painting. Lid done now we can do our first bit of highlighting and grab a lighter grey. I'll use castle grey here. Using the same sponge we'll get a little bit of paint in a straight line along the thin side of the sponge just to maximise our control. Dab off some of that paint just like you would if you were about to do some dry brushing. Give this a quick test on something and then you're in the pipe five by five. We're in the pipe five by five. Line up the piece and get the angle you want and then lightly touch or dare I say it again, dab. <laughs> 
all the way along the edge and watch it just pick up the light gray and give you a little great, super easy, barely an inconvenience edge highlight. Repeat this process along all the edges you want. And in this particular case, all the way along the bin lid, what? the hell would you call these things lumpy bumpies the bin lid lumpy bumpies another little bonus of the sponge is how easily it tackles the curves of the lid normally i'd find highlighting up this kind of curve quite hard work but just some gentle caressing from the sponge and these bits pretty much painted themselves well except they they didn't because i did i because i'm holding the sponge and doing the painting. We all knew it wouldn't be long before I bust out some speed paint. I'm going to go with dark red slaughter red using my normal brush. And I'll also use some broad sword silver metallic speed paint, just adding a splash of detail, painting it properly. A few really well placed details will make the train really stand out, but at the same time, doesn't need to cost you an arm and a leg in the time department. There we have it guys, looking pretty damn swish, if I don't mind saying so myself. Very few minutes work, not a lot of technical difficulties. It was very simple. Anybody could do this, guys, trust me. Now, I did paint up both the bins that I own and they're slightly different if we have a look. I've done them in the exact same way, only one of them got a little bit of bonus work. It was still all using the sponge, but the bonus of applying a sort of highlight, a lighter green, knocking it up a notch. In particular, this one was moldy clothes, but any goblin green, any lighter green is gonna do the same thing. So yeah, just a little bit of edge highlighting on the second one, brightening it up the box. They both still look pretty sick and one took a little bit more time, looks slightly better and one just didn't take as long and still looks very good so it can always be taken that notch further if you'd like to put more time into it well that was way too fast you could absolutely stop there you could move on and tackle some more of your mountain of shame but I wanted to take this paint job to the next level I think the sponge is fast but actually just like a really fantastic way of painting this kind of miniature it gave a really really nice clean crisp and almost textured finish to the paint job, adding a few extra details on this and I think you'll be left with a really great piece, all while still being incredibly fast. So let's add some rust effects. I'm going to use Vallejo's Mecha Weathering and in this instance their Dark Rust Wash. I'm going to grab this little bit of old bubble wrap and resist procrastinating with it. I'm going to slip my finger inside it, dip it in a bit of the rust wash and get to work on the dumpster. Tapping my finger where I want the rust to form on the piece, mostly around the bottom and sort of gradienting it and fading it up the miniature as though there's more rust on the bottom and it's fading out towards or further away from the rain hitting the floor. On the front of the dumpster, I'm gonna go in heavy so you can get a real feel for what using a lot of this rust will look like. On the sides, I'll be a little bit less aggressive. And then finally on the back, I'll be the most restrained and just add a super small amount. Now, once this is dry, this is actually my personal favorite. Again, similar to blood, less is more, but hopefully, all the sides are going to give you a feel and a look for what you might like to do if you would like to apply some rust. And then just one final thing while I'm here, I've got a load of these printed out posters, sort of miniature scale, I'll just use my inkjet printer. Grab a pair of scissors and we'll just bust this one out. I noticed my printout had Deadpool, so it feels fairly fitting, giving this is Marvel's Crisis Protocol. And then we're just going to simply snippety snip along there and all the way around easy peasy lemony squeezy and we've just stuck that down with a little bit of clear pva glue and i've used a little bit of water around the edges just to sort of blend it in and make it look a little bit seamless it's kind of like somebody's just slapped a load of poster paste on the back of the bin and then stuck this poster up and that's it guys all completely finished lots of different stages you can stop at any one of them here you can spend the amount of time you want and you can add to it if time permits or even remember you can always go back and add highlights details weathering all at a later date the base paint job can let you get the miniature to the table sooner and then you can fancy pants it up after the fact. I am now a huge fan of using the sponge and I have to admit there was almost no learning curve. It felt easy and natural to use 
it leaves a very nice finish and it was fast and, and honestly just incredibly fun it's a lovely way to paint now don't forget to subscribe to us as we climb to 100,000 subscribers every 10,000 subscriber milestones we're going to be picking one of you for a free mega set of speed paint and then when we hit the final 100,000 goal one of you will find yourselves on the receiving end of the complete speed paint set you've watched it now go and paint it